Hey there, Pixelers, it's Michael Haddon. eBPF is a powerful and versatile technology that allows you to run custom programs in the Linux kernel. It's used for a wide range of purposes from networking to security and even observability. If you're eager to dive deeper into observability, don't miss out our two previous thrilling videos on eBPF. Today, we're going to meet XDP, the Express Data Path a high-performance data path that harnesses the power of eBPF to process packets at the lowest possible level in the kernel. With this remarkable duo, you can create lightning-fast, flexible, and efficient networking applications that will leave you in awe. We will discover the why and the how behind this technology and set up an example project. Make sure you have the BCC package installed on your Linux machine. All the code examples will be in Git down in the description. Without further ado, let's dive right into action and kick things off by creating our very own eBPF probe.c file. First up, we create a function named xdp underscore packet underscore counter, which is triggered for every incoming packet on an attached network interface. We will craft a BPF array called packet count map which elegantly holds a single U64 element, keeping track of the packet count. As each packet rolls in, our program deftly searches for the counter value in the packet count map using the key zero. When the lookup succeeds, our program increments the counter value by one, with the help of sync, fetch, and add, ensuring that even when multiple packets are processed simultaneously, the counter stays accurate. Finally, like a relay race, the packet is handed off to the next stage in the networking stack as the program returns xdp underscore pass. Now, we need to create our Python code which will interact with and manage our fancy new eBPF program. We do this by creating a new file eBPF runner.py. This Python script will unleash the power of the BCC library to load compile and attach an eBPF program to your chosen network interface. The eBPF program, aptly named XDP Packet Counter, takes on the crucial role of counting incoming packets. Our script features a custom exception class, terminate signal, and a signal handler, handle sig term, to tackle the sig term signal, making sure the script exits gracefully when needed. It also defines functions to load the eBPF program, attach the program to a network interface, and detach it from the same interface. In the main function, our script registers the signal handler for SIGTERM, loads the eBPF program, and attaches it to the specified network interface like a well-oiled machine. Be sure to change the interface variable to whichever interface your computer is using. Then, it grabs a packet count map from the eBPF program and dives into a loop to count the packets. This loop takes a one second power nap before checking the packet count again, calculates the number of packets it received per second and proudly displays the results. The script can be interrupted with a simple control C press or by receiving a sig term signal. As the script comes to an end, it detaches the eBPF program from the network interface and makes a stylish exit. Detaching the eBPF program is vital, otherwise it will continue to running wild in the kernel unmanaged. And now when we run our code sudo python eBPF runner.py, we will be greeted with this lovely output. Let's dive into some advanced XDP actions that will allow you to manipulate and process packets in various ways. XDP boasts a collection of powerful actions that grants you ultimate control over packet processing. XDP pass effortlessly pass the packets to the next stage in the networking stack. XDP drop silently drop the packet, halting further processing in its tracks. XDP TX transmits the packet directly to the same or another interface. XDP redirect redirect the packet to a different interface. XDP aborted, assertively stop the processing of the packet and signal an error. With these dynamic actions at your fingertips, you'll have an unparalleled flexibility and control over packet processing, empowering you to create cutting-edge networking applications. 
Time to drop these pesky unwanted network packets with XDP drop. By tweaking our existing code, we'll craft a nifty firewall that puts stop to incoming connections from 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Introducing the drop packet to destination function. This addition checks if a packet source IP matches a given blocked IP, and if it does, bam, the packet gets dropped. We'll integrate this into our XDP packet counter function right after incrementing the packet counter. We'll craft the blocked IP address in network byte order without any external dependencies using the power of bitwise or magic. Here's how we conjure up the blocked IP variable. The first block zaps the value 8 left by 24 bits. The second one shifts the value 8 left by 16 bits. The third one slides the value 8 left by 8 bits. And in the fourth one, 8 just stays how it is. When these values unite with bitwise or, they form 0x0808080808, corresponding to the IPv4 address 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. The BE32 type serves as an alias for the 30-bit Big Endian integer, which is widely used to represent IPv4 addresses in network byte order. Good news, no Python code updates needed. Now, if you dare to ping on this interface using ping minus capital I, your interface, 8.8.8.8, you'll witness the impressive power of our code as no packets slip through. Victory. Imagine effortlessly gaining insights into the packets being dropped by our eBPF program. Let's amp up our observability game and make it happen. Start by defining a new BPF perf output debug events right below the BPF array definition. This will allow us to send events from our eBPF program to user space. Next, it's going to be time for a little makeover of our drop if block. We can report the drop packets to our eBPF runner application which we can then update as follows. We extend the functionality of our original Python code by printing a message whenever a packet is dropped due to a source IP address matching the specified block IP address. We do this with our new print debug event method being called from the new open perf buffer definition. And don't forget, we have to set up BPF perf buffer poll to diligently poll buffer events, keeping us in the loop now. Our application is all set to smoothly integrate with Prometheus or any other observability stack we fancy. Running our XDP program on the host's CPU is cool, but doing it on the NIC, that is next level awesome. Let's look at what's happening in our current flow. 1. Packet arrives at the physical network interface card, NIC, from the outside world. Our NIC processes the packet and generates an interrupt signal to the CPU. The Linux kernel receives the interrupt signal and schedules the appropriate driver to handle the incoming packets. The packet is placed in a receive buffer by the NIC driver. The eBPF XDP program is executed by the kernel, processing the packet before it reaches the full networking stack. Depending on the XDP action chosen by the eBPF program, if XDP pass, the packet continues through the Linux networking stack. If XDP drop or XDP aborted, the packet is dropped and does not continue through the networking stack. If XDP TX or XDP redirect, the packet is transmitted or redirected to another interface without going to the rest of the networking stack. So if the packet does continue through the networking stack, it goes through the following stages, the network processing layer, the transport processing layer, and then the packet is handed off to the appropriate socket buffer. Then the user space application reads the packet from the socket buffer. Our current implementation runs solely on our host's CPU after being initialized by the Linux kernel. However, I have an alternative. By letting our trusty network interface card handle the heavy lifting, we can avoid the need for our CPU to set in. With this new flow, the packet arrives at the physical network interface card, NIC, from the outside world. The eBPF XDP program is executed directly on the NIC hardware, processing the packet before it reaches the Linux kernel. And then depending on the XDP action chosen by the eBPF program, if XDP pass, the packet continues the Linux kernel. If XDP drop or XDP aborted, the packet is dropped and does not continue to the kernel. 
If XDP TX or XDP redirect, the packet is transmitted or redirected to another interface without necessarily going through the Linux kernel networking stack. To unleash the power of NIC offloading, make sure you have hardware that is up to the task. While consumer-grade devices and laptops might not be quite ready, high-performance and data center-grade NICs are born for this job. Keep in mind, though, that not all XDP features are supported in offloaded mode. Consult your NICs documentation to ensure seamless compatibility. By embracing optimization techniques and prioritizing observability, you can take your projects to new heights. So, get ready to unleash the creativity and explore the endless possibilities that XDP has to offer. Happy coding and here's to your next high performance networking masterpiece. Thanks for checking out this video. As always, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Cheers.